So what are what do people say gives them like oh I can't vote for him because what are the things that they tell me what, what answers can I help you provide? Or just see. Well, the only one I've had, and I don't even, couldn't even remember who said that to me, but they mentioned about skin, you know, and they think Muslims, by the way, so I kind of set them free on that, whether they believe yeah. thought I was covering for it, I don't know, but, yeah. um, and I thought it was fair, not much we can do about that one. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, so yeah. You just watched an Iowa Republican voter explain to Vivek Ramaswamy's wife, Apoorva, that one of the biggest reasons one of her peers told her that they refused to support Vivek was because of his dark skin and suspicion that he may be a Muslim. Yeah. Now, this conversation took place recently, which means that Vivek's attempt to ingratiate himself with white supremacists in the Republican Party has failed. Predictably so. And at that same event, his wife faced even more questions about their religion. Let's watch. So you, you had a question about religion? Just, yeah, just here. Okay, yeah. So we do not come from kind of the traditional background for most presidential candidates. We are Hindus. Yes, in a lot of ways, I think for a lot of people for whom religion is important, and we care a lot about God and our relationship to God, so I understand when people hear that we're Hindu, you want to know, like, what does that mean? Who are you? What do you stand for? So our religion teaches us that all of us have been put here by God for a purpose. And everyone has been given a gift, some gifts by God. And we have, it's our job to use those gifts to the best of our abilities while we are here on this earth. And so... That is, in a lot of ways, why we are doing this. Honestly, bless her heart. The patience that she has is truly admirable. She's much more likable than Vivek, and I think she seems like a genuine person, aside from the fact that she's married to a fascist like him. But I really do hate that they feel like they're forced to coddle white supremacists in the Republican Party to be barely viable. But I mean, they unfortunately kind of have to do that. They have to cater to the sensibilities of dumb fuck racists if they want to be members of this party. But one thing that they don't understand seemingly about these white evangelicals is that they're not looking for mere similarities between religious values, right? They want you to disavow your religion entirely and become Christian. Full stop. And even then, they still might not support you because you're not white. It's just the lost cause. But I mean, accepting Jesus as the son of God is step number one in their eyes. Now, Vivek himself has been asked about this specific question on the campaign trail numerous times. And here's how it went in one instance. So I'll be very honest. It's not a hard question at all. So in, in our faith tradition, Jesus Christ is a son of God. I know that is different than saying he's the son of God, but that is my view of Jesus Christ. He's got our family. Do we worship in churches? Yes, we do. Is that compatible with our faith? Yes, it is. One true God in many forms. So that's different, and I understand that. That is different. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. I think, I think that that is the path. That is a path to heaven is the way we look at it. But belief in God is what we say. Yeah. Belief in the one true God. That's, that's the way I look at it. I mean, this is why I say it's a lost cause. The modern Republican Party is simply too racist and too deep in that Christian nationalism bubble to vote for someone like him. And to make matters worse, it's not just racism and Islamophobia that he's dealing with, even though he's not a Muslim. It's xenophobia as well, since GOP voters perceive him and his wife to be immigrants. Now, this was a concern that they expressed to his wife in Iowa. NBC News reports, at a later event in Jefferson County, Iowa, Apoorva Ramaswamy was grilled by one of two event attendees about her own upbringing. Quote, how long have you been in the United States? Were you born here? Asked Wayne Neeskern, an attendee from Fairfield, Iowa. Quote, no, I came when I was four. Vivek was born and raised in Cincinnati, Apoorva Ramaswamy replied, explaining her family's Indian heritage. The attendee continued with questions about Apoorva Ramaswamy's parents, where they lived and whether they had green cards, they are citizens, before remarking that she doesn't have an accent. Quote, I've been here since I was four years old, Apoorva Ramaswamy replied. I've spoken English since I was four. Oh my God, this is so cringeworthy. 
In an interview after the event, Nieskern explained that he loves foreign people. Oh, thank God, I was beginning to think otherwise, citing what he described as his two unofficially adopted children. He said he asked about a Purva Ramaswamy's upbringing because of the bad things the Ramaswamy's say about the state of the country. He has not yet decided who he will support at his caucus, but he said it won't be Ramaswamy. Shocker, I know. So it's not just whether or not you're an immigrant. The question is also whether or not you are sufficiently loyal to America, especially as an immigrant, because maybe your loyalties lie with another country. I mean, I would say that this is just explicit racism and xenophobia. But again, he did say that he loves foreign people. So I guess we have nothing to worry about here. Whew. Thank goodness here. But I mean, this guy, he's not even a Trump supporter. But that doesn't matter. You would expect Trump supporters to be the most xenophobic, but all Republicans are xenophobic and racist. And I say this because most Republicans literally agree with the harshest anti-immigrant rhetoric imaginable. And yes, that includes literal Nazi rhetoric. And I say this because a poll conducted by CBS News and YouGov finds that a majority of all Republican voters agree with Trump's Hitlerian statement that immigrants are poisoning the blood of the nation. And as you can see from the second graphic here, 72% of registered Republican voters agree with the Nazi rhetoric if it's not attributed to anyone, but they like it even more or if Trump says it. So these are the kinds of people that Vivek Ramaswamy is trying to win over. The GOP's base consists almost exclusively of radicalized fascists who love Hitlerian rhetoric. So this is why his attempt to humanize himself has not worked. It doesn't matter if he's chummed it up with white supremacists that they like, like Steve King, or even parroted the Great Replacement conspiracy theory. If he's not white and not Christian, at the bare minimum, they fundamentally don't see him as one of them. And religious leaders have also been pretty open about their contempt for his religion and even claimed that his Hindu faith is evidence that Satan is trying to trick Christians. And I'm not making this up. Satan is the author of confusion. And we know that. And right now, the, the, the battle is coming for the presidential nomination. And there's a man who is gaining traction right now as the presidential nominee and his name is Vivek Ramaswamy and he is Hindu and those who are Hindu believe in many gods and he speaks well and he is very charismatic and he says the right things he says so many right things sometimes I'm like maybe he is the right guy but he's not, because our God will not be mocked. Do not be fooled. Do not be a victim of Satan's confusion right now. So literally just having a different religion in their eyes is tantamount to spiritual warfare where Satan is trying to trick them. And people question whether or not they mean Christianity when they talk about religious liberty. This is about Christian dominance, Christian nationalism. Now, the rhetoric that we're seeing here is just a microcosm of a bigger issue, and Vivek has had to do a lot to try to assuage their fears about his religion. NBC News continues, In the early days of his campaign, Vivek Ramaswamy faced so many questions about his Hindu faith that he eventually incorporated an explainer of Hinduism into his campaign stump speech. And yet, how big of an impact has that had? It's crazy that Republican voters are so racist and so evil that they have me almost feeling sad for Vivek Ramaswamy. I certainly feel bad for his wife, but I feel bad for him, too, even though I shouldn't because he's a fascist. This is the party who he wants to be with because they also have a lot of fascistic beliefs, but they also have racist beliefs and they don't want to invite him to the white ethno state that they want to create. And it's just it's sad to see somebody try to convince themselves just on a human level that they're human just like them, but they just, they don't want to see it. They turn their brains off because he's brown and not Christian. It, it's just, it's, it's sickening. This is the Republican Party. This is a significant portion of the American population. Even though Vivek Ramaswamy has horrifying fascistic beliefs himself, you know, they don't want nothing to do with him. Now, I respect the effort just on a human level that he's making at the micro scale to try to change the hearts and minds of white racists in the Republican Party. I think that that's important. The problem is that 
Even if he's changed some minds about him at the micro level, on the macro level, he's not actually going to make that big of a dent in the GOP's racism overall. And that's because deconstructing these kinds of racist beliefs requires much more than just getting to know one non-white person. And at best, they're still going to be skeptical of non-whites, but just think that Vivek Ramaswamy is one of the good ones, but not because they see his humanity. In their eyes, he's only good because he's useful to their white white supremacist cause because he's willing to reinforce their white supremacist beliefs by saying the great replacement conspiracy theory is real. But the problem, Vivek, is that they see you as trying to replace them. You are running for president. So like, if you are going to get them to not be racist, you've got to target the root cause. And unfortunately, he's not doing that. But again, it is important that he tried to make the case for his humanity on some level. At least his wife seems to be doing a really good job at that because I think that that does matter. But again, it's not going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things, unfortunately, because this party is fundamentally racist and their whole ethos is just objecting to anyone who's not like them having civil liberties and civil rights. So Vivek Ramaswamy is having to come to terms with the fact that the Republican Party is just too racist to vote for him. Although we'll see because the Iowa caucus is tonight. So maybe they're going to prove me wrong, but I doubt that because Vivek has so much working against him. And on top of that, he was just thrown under the bus by Donald Trump as well, which is tantamount to the final nail in his campaign's coffin. On Truth Social, Trump tweeted, Vivek started his campaign as a great supporter, the best president in generations. Unfortunately, now all he does is disguise his support in the form of deceitful campaign tricks. Very sly, but a vote for Vivek is a vote for the other side. Don't get duped by this. Vote for Trump. Don't waste your vote. Vivek is not MAGA. The Biden indictment against his political opponent will never be allowed in this country. They are already beginning to fall. MAGA. Now, Vivek responded saying, yes, I saw President Trump's truth social post. It's an unfortunate move by his campaign advisors. Oh, please don't pretend like he's not just word vomiting on truth social and this is some calculated thing. Uh, I don't think friendly fire is helpful. Donald Trump was the greatest president of the 21st century, and I'm not going to criticize him in response to this late attack. He then talks about all of the Trump dick writing that he's done, and then he concludes saying, our move must live on. America first didn't start in 2016. It started in 1776. We owe it to our founding fathers to do the right thing for our country. I want to save Trump and save this country. Let's do it together. You won't hear any friendly fire from me. Trump then responded to that by doubling down, saying a vote for Vivek is a wasted vote. I like Vivek, but he played it too cute with us. Caucus tonight. Vote for Donald J. Trump. Build up the numbers. In November, we must take our very troubled nation, a nation in decline back from crooked Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats and thugs who are destroying it. MAGA. Yeah. So Vivek, despite his loyalty, is now persona non grata because Daddy Trump made it so. And now the conservatives who did take Vivek seriously and weren't actually against him because they're racist are now forced to denounce him in order to remain in MAGA's good graces. For example, MAGA influencers like Laura Loomer called out fellow conservative and closeted commentator Benny Johnson after he deleted a tweet that he made announcing that he'd be in Iowa campaigning with Vivek. Other Chud influencers Influencers like Brendan Dilley also shamed Johnson, which led to him putting out a clarification statement reading, Hi guys, want to clear something up. We deleted a poorly worded tweet sent earlier. We're in Iowa filming a documentary for our In the Arena show about the caucus. We're not campaigning for or being a surrogate for any campaign. We're not being paid by anyone. I like Trump. I like Vivek. I love America. And he even responded directly to Laura Loomer to make sure that she saw that he's still unconditionally loyal to Trump. I mean, <laughs> So fucking pathetic, man. But I mean, this is uh, what's necessary since Vivek has been deemed unworthy by Daddy Donald Trump, which means that other conservative influencers are now going to have to think twice about speaking kindly about Vivek if they don't want to piss off Donald Trump. And of all people, Ron DeSantis somehow had the perfect response to this. You know, I noticed that they um, th th that he threw. Um, um, so, oh, the back, back. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he threw him under the bus. Um, you know, it's like I've never seen a candidate run for an office 
and basically campaign for another candidate in the same race before, and that's what's happened. But the minute he wasn't useful, you know, they 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 they, they drop the hammer on it. So that's just kind of the way way they are. I mean, when Ron DeSantis thinks that you've gone too far and you've humiliated yourself, it's time to throw in the towel. But Vivek is not stopping anytime soon, and to make matters more embarrassing for him, he is trying to play it cool and pretend as if he wasn't just thrown under the bus by Donald Trump. Case in point. Why do you think uh, former President Trump threw you under the bus over the weekend? Well, I, I didn't get thrown anywhere, but I think there might have been an attempt to do that. I'd say that it's partly because of what it was, Elon, you were under the bus. Well, look, I'd say what and, Elon and Musk and others not, well, The bus seeing. had snow tires on it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this is, is you know, I'll, I'll, I took it in a, in a lighthearted way. But the truth is people have to have their heads stuck in the snow not to see what's happening on the ground here. I know the mainstream media is ignoring it, but there has been a massive surge here late in the process. Mm -hmm. A number of endorsers who were widely expected to go to Donald Trump, legends in Iowa, like former Congressman Steve King, widely expected to go for Trump, came for me. A number of the strongest constitutionalist conservatives have switched from the other candidates in the last 72 hours to me. Steve Holt came from Ron DeSantis. Right. And so I think people who are actually on the ground are not blind to that reality. And right. I think the mainstream media, largely for better or worse, has been, which means I think we're going to see a shock tonight. Whatever you say, man. I mean, we'll find out soon. In fact, by the time most of you see this video, you'll already know the outcome of the Iowa caucus, assuming nothing shitty happens like it did in 2020. But I mean, let's just assume for a moment Vivek stunned the world and he won the Iowa caucus or performed much better than anyone expected. Does anyone actually think he's going to become the GOP nominee? And if he were to become the GOP's nominee, can you imagine how bad it would be for him in terms of racist backlash from Trump supporters specifically who'd inevitably accuse him of stealing the nomination from Trump. I mean, imagine the racist bullshit that his family would have to endure for years from his own party if he beats Donald Trump. He'd be a victim of his own success even if he won, which is the best case scenario for him. It's just, it's sad. So even though he is a bad person and a fascist, it is sad that this is what he has to deal with. But I mean, if you want to caucus with fascists, you can expect fascism. If you want to align yourself politically with white supremacists, you can expect white supremacy. It's kind of one of those situations where, you know, if, you, if you're going to play with a scorpion, don't be surprised if you get stung. If you're going to play with a snake, don't be surprised if you get bit. I mean, I get it. He loves late stage capitalism and agrees, you know, economically and even to some of the core tenets of the GOP's white supremacist philosophy. He's also anti-immigration, but I mean, he's with the GOP, and this is what they believe. And it's just, it's it's gross, it's, it's disturbing, and it's sad. So, I mean, good luck, Vivek, because you're going to need it. Vagina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>